Good morning. morning. Welcome to this service here also this morning. Welcome to those streaming live and with us this morning as well. It's a Holy Communion service to which you all are invited to partake at the Lord's table. The watchword for this coming week is taken from the first letter of John chapter 5 verse 4. It reads as follows. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. We'd just like to make the following announcements. Next week, Sunday, the following services are taking place. The 8th of October here at St Andrews at the Vine Service at 8.30 with Children's Ministry. Then a 9 o'clock service on the 8th of October at St Peter's Kumka at the showgrounds. That's an ecumenical service. Then next week, Thursday, the 5th of October, we'll be starting again with the Bible sharing at the Mans, and it's all about discipleship, learning together from God. Then on Saturday, the 7th of October at 8 o'clock, here at the Hall, there will be biscuit baking. Well, that's if ESCOM plays along. <laughs> then, um, a reminder of the Harvest Thanksgiving service that takes place on the 29th of October, followed with a bring and share lunch. A reminder that at this Harvest Thanksgiving service we want to collect for our Christmas shoe project. The list of things that you can put in to your harvest bag if you want to bring it along is in the newsletter. Then just a reminder, Synod is also around the corner. Synod takes place on the 12th of October, Thursday evening, and it starts with a Holy Communion service at 6 o'clock, to which everybody is also invited. And then we'll close on Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock with the close, closing service of Synod, to which you are also all invited to partake. Because on that Sunday the 15th there will be no services in the border area. So we're celebrating the Sunday service on Saturday, 5 o'clock, followed with the light supper. Please let us know if you want to attend, just for catering purposes for some cruises. Then we want to think of the following people on our prayer list. This morning we want to remember the Schuff family with the passing of Dudley Schuff. Earlier this week we want to also thank of Lorraine and her family. It's nice to have you in the church this morning, Lorraine. We also want to pray for Wendy and Trevor Fiebiger, for Daniel Hoyer, and for Michael Berger, and for Curly Randall, and also for Sylvia Kretz. Those are the announcements. As the watchword says, and this is the victory that has conquered our world, our faith. Today's service is all about that little word, faith, and what that means for our daily life. And we want to hear a bit more about this faith in our readings, in our prayers, and also in the hymns that we are going to sing. I'll announce the hymns as we go on during the service. We now want to gather here this morning, personally and virtually, because there are no foreigners, we are all welcome in God's presence. In God's presence there is always acceptance, for love is the language of our faith. In God's presence there are no divisions, for God dwells in each one of us. Come this morning, let us hear the life-giving word of God. Come, let us praise Him with our singing and thanksgiving. Come, let us celebrate the service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn that we want to sing, I ask you to open your hymn books at the number 877. 877. Trust and obey. Verses 1, 2, and 4. 877. Verses 1, 2, and 4.
Heavenly Father, I ask that you be with your children now, and also be with your silver. She teaches them all about you. Heavenly Father, may your blessings surround them every day of their lives. I pray this in your name. The Epistle reading for today is written in chapter 10 of the letter to the Romans. Paul says, If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, the same the Lord is Lord for all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how can they call on one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim? And how do they proclaim him? unless they were sent. 
As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed your message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes to the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Double three O verses one, two, and four. Rock of Ages three hundred and thirty verses one, two, and four. <coughs> Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then he answered her, Woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us confess our Christian faith and God, our Father Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with our Christian <coughs> brothers and sisters around the world by speaking together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From me he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lost. Amen. You may be seated. I will hope that you want to sing in preparation for the sermon is The Well Known Hymn, Amazing Grace, the number 851. 851. In the middle, it's at the back, 851. Verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. 17, and I read from the New International Version. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. 
I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they couldn't. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him to Jesus. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately drew the boy into a convulsion. He fell onto the ground, rolling around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus turned to the father and asked, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us, help us. If I can, Jesus said, Everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately the father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the sea, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, Jesus said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked as much as a corpse, but and many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. So here our sermon text for today. Dear brothers and sisters, we encounter a desperate father in this text. A father who's experienced so much hurt in his life that have left scars. The hurt of having to see his son suffer. Over and over, his dreams, his hopes to help his son have been shattered by the doctors, by the religious leaders, and now even by the disciples. And each time his hopes and dreams are shattered, and he experiences the scars of love. It feels like they chisel away at his faith. Reality is that we too in our life experience how our own hope is shattered. How we experience things that leave hurtful scars in our life. Reality is that this hopelessness then also begins to chisel away at our faith. We begin to feel ashamed that our faith is so little, so weak, when we look around us and we start to compare ourselves with others. And in that moment when these scars hurt us so much and when we feel so hopelessly down and sitting on our ash heap, we think, there's nothing that I can do in any case. He, Jesus, wants to teach us this morning and that we pause and that we reflect on the sermon text because when you do this, we can learn from the desperate father that there is actually something we can do. And through the actions of a father in this Bible passage, it becomes clear that faith is to fully rely on God. Remember when all those little taggies came around that you could put on your arm with what would Jesus do? There was also the one with the frog on that reminds us to fully rely on God. In the first instance, faith entails to keep moving towards Jesus who calls us to come to Him. Jesus turns to the Father and with compassion says to the Father, bring the boy to me. And Jesus encourages all of us to come to him just as we are. To come with, to him with all our shattered dreams, with all our hopelessness that we experience, with all our brokenness, with all our anxiety. 
with all those scars that are hurting us. Jesus says, come to me. We realize then, we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have the strong, courageous faith that can move mountains to be able to come to Jesus. No, Jesus invites us to get moving towards him, to come to him. In addition, Jesus also wants to teach us as his followers of this passage that we as his disciples are to bring people before God who are going through hard and difficult times. We do this by praying for them, by being there for them. To fully rely on God and faith then means to moving towards Jesus who calls us to come to him. And then we realize indeed there is something that we can do in those situations of hopelessness. We can get moving towards Jesus as we hear his voice calling us. In the second instance, Faith entails to share with the listening Jesus what is on our heart. Jesus is in this passage focuses his whole attention on the Father. And he <coughs> asks the Father, tell me your story. And the Father proceeds to tell his story, to pour out his fears, his concerns, his disappointments, his hopes, his dreams. Jesus reminds all of us this morning as well. He wants to listen to what is on our heart. We're allowed to be honest. He wants to hear every little detail. We are therefore always allowed in His presence to name those things that fill you with fear, those worries that drown you. Those disappointments that you've experienced, the hurt. You're allowed to share with the Lord the good things, your hopes, your dreams, and those things that you are thankful for. Jesus actually wants to hear every little minute detail that's on your heart. That's how much Jesus cares about you. And with that, Jesus also reminds us, he's never, ever, ever too busy for us to hear us. And the good news of this Bible passage that Jesus gives to us each personally this morning is, and that's the gospel. The gospel, Jesus Christ listens to each one of us. To fully rely on God and faith then simply means to open up your heart before God, to share with Him. And so we realize then that there is indeed something that we can do in our situation of hopelessness. We can open our mouth and our hearts and share in all honesty what's in here with our Heavenly Father. In the third instance, faith entails asking Jesus to give us a heart that trusts in God alone. This Father, with every little last strength that he had left in himself, cries out to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. In other words, he confesses, Faith is simply a gift from God. He cannot do anything by himself, but with God, Almighty God, nothing is impossible. He's standing before Jesus with empty hands and asking Jesus, Jesus, please give me a heart that believes in God alone. And the same is also true for us again this morning. All we can do is to come before God with empty hands. Faith is a gift that we can never earn. It's precisely that. It's a gift. 
We too need to ask Jesus. Jesus, give us a heart, please, that believes in God our Father. Every morning anew, we are to make that conscious decision when we wake up. To come in the presence of our Father with open hands to surrender our insufficiency by asking God to give us faith in His sufficiency, in His abilities, in the face of a country that we are experiencing in our life. We realize that to fully rely on God means simply standing before God with open hands, asking Him to give us a heart that has faith in God. Again, we have to realize that there is something that we can do when we find ourselves in a situation of hopelessness. We can ask Jesus to give us a heart of faith and God's sufficiency and abilities. In the last instance, faith entails allowing Jesus to take us by our hand, to help us up, to lead us through our life. This passage, our sermon text, ends with this wonderful image. Jesus takes the hand of the boy, he lifts him up from the ground and puts him on his feet again, a symbol to the father and the boy, that they never alone. God the Almighty Father is always present in their life, giving a helping hand. And Jesus this morning stretches his hand out to you as well, to pick you up, to hold you by your hand, to guide you through every aspect of your life. To fully rely on God and faith means Please, Lord, here's my hand. Please take it. Again, we realize there is something that we can do in those moments of hopelessness. We can accept the helping hand that Jesus stretches out to us, to lead us, to guide us through his ever presence in our daily life. Dear fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, in conclusion, a wonderful Bible passage that just shows us how Jesus takes this chaos that's in the scene and how he creates and restores life again. A passage that reminds us <laughs> we don't need to have this strong, mighty faith. No. Other way around, this faith we are given by God alone. So therefore it's not about having a strong faith, a weak faith, a sturdy faith, or the size of our faith. It's a gift that God gives to each one of us. And the faith that we are given each day in you is to fully rely on God's abilities and sufficiency that God is able, that with Him nothing is impossible, contrary to what we are seeing and experiencing around us. That is faith to fully rely on God's abilities and sufficiency. And so we learn again this morning, faith is never static. It's never just sitting in the queue, in the pew, being fed, just being comfortable. No, it's active. It happens in our life. In those moments when things just seem to happen in our life that chisel away from our faith, I encourage you to get active, to get moving towards Jesus who calls you, to pour out your heart to your loving Father who listens to you, to ask God to give you a heart of faith in his sufficiency and ability to grab hold of that hand that God stretches out to you.
to lead and to guide you. And all we can do in faith is to remember that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, that that will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our next hymn that we want to sing is also about our faith that always looks up to God. The hymn 368. 368. Four verses, the first four verses. 368. My faith looks up to thee. 368. Verses 1 to 4. My faith looks up to thee. Activities. This 
morning we pray for the people who are filled with doubt, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening to our prayers, who wonder what this whole community is about. We pray for the people who doubt the purpose of life, who wonder whether to end it all or who face feelings of meaningless and despair. We come to you to create silence and aim for all those things which cause us to worry and bring us uncertainty and we lay it at the your feet. Heavenly Father, give us the gift of faith so that we can be your faithful people, believing in your power to save, believing in your power to reign, believing that we can share the good news with everyone we need. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We now want to celebrate Holy Communion. I had to just change the Holy Communion because of liturgy, it's a bit different than what I had in mind. There will also be no singing during Holy Communion. There are no singing that will just play um, for us music during Holy Communion. We come to God's table because again it is God who invites us each personally to come to this table. He invites us. He wants to bless us through a gift of bread and wine. Therefore let us come into the presence of God and let us praise God. For you, God, our Creator, the valleys long and sing, the trees of the field clap their hands. Your earth summons us to break the silence and to be one in song with creation. We indeed give you our thanks and praise. For you, God, of all, the church in its many forms and countless languages honors its Saviour. Millions upon millions invite us to also give you our thanks and praise. Even in heaven beyond our seeing, the angels and the saints are caught up in song, and those we have loved and lost are part of that great company that call us to be one with harmony of heaven. We give you our thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that night we rose to pray. He took the bread and when he given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. In the same way he took the cup after the supper, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do it as often as you can, in remembrance of me. Let us pray with the words of our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ now be with you. Come to the table, everything is ready. Kindly be seated, Pharaoh will usher you to the front. <laughs>
May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ forgive and proceed, strengthen and keep you in His grace unto the eternal life, both in the peace of our Lord. Amen.
Let us give thanks for all God's goodness, because God's love shall last forever. Let's pray. Generous and faithful God, you have fed us here at your table. May the nourishment that we have received enable us to enrich the lives of others, wherever we may go from here. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, as you go from here, remember that God who chose you before your birth and calls you and knows you by name, now sends you back into this world to bring light to those who are in darkness, to comfort those who grieve, to bring hope to those in despair. Go under the blessing of God into the new week, and may the blessing of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among you and within you as you seek to do God's will. Amen. Please be seated. Before we sing our last hymn, we're going to sing our last hymn, and then we're going to listen to the postlude, and once the postlude is finished, I ask you kindly to be, to remain seated. I still have an announcement to make. Let us sing our last hymn, the number triple eight. May the feet of God walk with you. Triple eight, we want to sing the one verse, may the feet of God walk with you. Thank you. 